Luke chapter 4, and uh, Jesus was always in the will of the Father, and uh, everything He said and did was in the will of the Father. Every prayer He ever answered, I prayed He got answered, because He was always praying in the will of the Father. Now, I can't say I get every one of my prayers answered, because sometimes I might not be praying in God's will. But Jesus always did. And uh, so we're going to look at Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21, and uh, read there. And he, in this passage, he's referring back to the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 61. But right now, let's look at Luke chapter 4 and go down here to verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Well, I think he went to church. He probably carried a... Well, I don't think, don't think he could carry his Bible, but they had big scrolls. And so he goes to church and, and they said it was his custom. I guess he didn't think he could worship God on the golf course as good as in church. <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of them tell me, well, I can worship God but in nature. But I don't think they go to the golf course to worship God. I think they go to the golf course to play golf. But a lot of Christians, you know, they don't see the church as important. But apparently Jesus did. Because right here it says, and he came to Nazareth where he was brought up. Now, he wasn't born in uh, Nazareth. Where was he born? Sure. Bethlehem of Judea. And remember, uh, of course, the reason he was, uh, wasn't born in Nazareth is because they put a tax on. And God had prophesied he'd be born in Bethlehem. But because of the tax, he had to go back to his birthplace instead of, uh, uh, of where... But later on, he grows up in Nazareth. Of course, they had to flee off down to Egypt because they were killing off all the little babies. I thought I shouldn't mention this, but I'm going to. I don't know if you were uptown yesterday, mm -hmm. and the demonstrators reached all the way across the bridge with signs saying, well, to kill all the little babies. Because it's my body and I can do what I want to with it. And a lot of this abortion stuff is they use it for birth control. Mm -hmm. Well, it's your body. If you don't want to have a baby, don't have sex. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, those kinds of things. And, it's, you know, I, of course, they're going to fight in the Supreme Court over all this. And this one and the homosexual marriage thing shouldn't have been decided by the Supreme Court in the first place. That's right. Should have been decided by the states. Yep, that's constitutional. Because the states are the people. Not just a few people up there with black robes on. They're supposed to uh, interpret the law, not make the law. Congress makes laws. But who puts Congress there? Mm -hmm. Did you vote for some people to go to Congress? Well, the House of Representatives is closer to us, but the Senate, too. You even vote for senators, don't you? I was telling Carol, how many here uh, ever said the pledge to, a, a, to a, a flag with only 48 states, 48 stars? That kind of tells something about your age, wouldn't it? Huh? Back when I was in elementary school in the early, you know, early times, we didn't have Alaska and Hawaii as states. They only had 48 stars on there. But I think we live in a place where the government is supposed to represent the people, not the ones that yell the loudest. That's right. The majority, and I don't know if they always do that. Now my meddling's out of the way, I can go on right now. <coughs> So we, we, we found out Jesus is here in Nazareth. He went to church. He gets up and he wants to read out of the Bible. Amen. 
I think it'd be a good thing to bring you. Nowadays, we can bring the Bible to church. We can take the Bible home. They couldn't do that back then. But we ought to be thankful. We've got God's Word. We can carry it around with us. We can read it any time, any place. Amen. And that, that's a great thing. But you know, a lot of Christians have that privilege and they don't use it. They don't use it. You know, here in America, we have a lot of privileges we don't use. We can go out here and witness to people. So far, there's still freedom of speech, although they're doing their best to take it away from us as fast as they can. I guarantee you we're coming toward the end. So I says, I don't know. It sure seems like 1984 and George Orwell more than it ever has in my lifetime. Where the government oversees and runs everything. And they're wanting to put a worldwide tax on, on businesses. They're talking about it, talking about a lot of things. Well, let's go on. Verse 17, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, he's, he, he's got the scroll that's got the book of Isaiah in it. And it's Isaiah chapter 61, and he reads out of that. In verse 18, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because... Now, he's reading about himself, out of the book of Isaiah. He's reading a prophecy about himself. And he's doing this in a Jewish synagogue. Correct. And they're, boy, they're paying attention to him. And this is his hometown, so they know him. Matter of fact, they talk about well, his dad, just a carpenter. Well, who was his real dad? God. God. Right? But the religious, Jewish religious leaders didn't want to believe that. And so in verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. And recover, rec and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. Did Jesus bring any sight to any blind people? Yes, sir. Physically and spiritually. spiritually. You can apply that both ways. Did he ever wake you up? Did you now? Do you see things you didn't see in the past because the devil had you blinded? Mm -hmm. That Jesus was God Amen. in flesh. Virgin born, never ever sinned one time. Tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. sin. That's why He could go to the cross and die and pay for sins. If you go to the cross and die, you'd just be paying for your own sins. That's right. But Jesus wasn't paying for His sins because He didn't sin. And God set all that up and had a plan. And Jesus was here in this world to fulfill that plan. And he completely fulfilled it. Amen. And uh, he, he reads in this passage, and I'm going to take you back and show you. He cuts, he cuts the last, the second verse off. But he's already fulfilled up to where he read. And then he puts the book down. Amen. We'll look at that. Verse 19, to preach according to the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And his and all eyes, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. You think they knew what he was claiming? He was saying, I'm the Messiah, I'm God. Then the Jewish people didn't they were looking for the Messiah, but then when he came, they missed him. Most of them. There were exceptions. Verse 21, He began to say unto them, This day this Scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, He's saying, I'll fulfill this. I'm fulfilling it now. Amen. I'm settling this thing. Finishing it off. And all bear Him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of His mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? After all, you know, they knew him from the time probably his old boy. They knew who his 
stepdad was, right? They knew who his mother was. I think he'd probably been to that church before. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me, This proverb, Physician, heal thyself whatsoever we have uh, heard done in Capernaum, do also here in, uh, in thy country. And if you go on, get, read on down through here, guess what happens? They throw him out. Not only do they throw him out, they try to kill him. And he just walks right away from them. They can't hold him. It's kind of like, you know, when they come to get him in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, and uh, they could support Jesus of Nazareth, they all fell back and hit the ground. Said, I am. When he said, I am, he had a little power, didn't he? You think maybe he was God? I don't think he was God. I know he was. And they didn't want to accept that. Now go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 61. And I want to read a little bit there. Isaiah chapter 61. And uh, we're going to read uh, verse 1 and start into verse 2. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings. Is that kind of what he was saying there in Luke? He's supposed to come and preach the good tidings. What's the good tidings that Jesus came and preached? Repent. Repent. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They could have accepted him as their king, but they rejected him. And ended up killing him eventually, getting him killed. And in that first verse, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open uh, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Well, were you in prison? Yes, were you in captive to the devil? Mm -hmm. Well, it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. They sinned. And so they were held captive. It took Jesus to come into this world to set us free. But if you reject Him, there is no freedom. It gets me, you know, when they set up our country, uh, they uh, put in there, says, uh, we have these uh, rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, some people think they got to guarantee you happiness. No, you can pursue it, but you might not get it. You know what? I think part of it's where you're pursuing it. That's right. If it's money and prestige and power, Amen. you always want more. Hmm. You need to be content with what God gives you. Because it says content, con, contentment's great gain. But you know, uh, people get a little bit, they want more and more and more. And uh, the devil got a, quite a bit and he wanted more and more. You know, a lot of that's pride, isn't it? Now we're down to verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he stops right there. If you read Luke, that's where he stops. Right there at that comma. See the comma? Well, he came to tell people how to get saved. They rejected it. Then uh, he was fulfilling it up to that point. But you know he's going to come back one of these days and he's going to finish it off. Right. Now let's read what he's going to finish off. He's going to come back and all the ones that reject him, he's going to judge them. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Well, you know, somebody, I, I, I think a lot of people Maybe some of these little babies they've murdered, aborted. Will God bring vengeance on people that have abused children? Yeah. Well, the Bible says that uh, if you abuse the little ones, it says, suffer the, uh, the little ones to come unto me for such the kingdom of God. Amen. There ought to be a millstone tied around your neck and you're thrown in the sea. 
Well, I think that'd be pretty radical, don't you think? Well, here in America, we, you know, it gets me the people go out here and kill people and kill people and kill people. They put them in jail, let them back out. <coughs> we always want to make more laws while we enforce the laws we have. That's right. Different. We can't, all, all they do is just push it down the road. Now, I maybe need to be careful what I say, but it's hard for me to do that. Because if the Bible says it, that's the way it is. Amen. And I don't understand everything in the Bible, but I can understand quite a bit. I understood enough to get saved. Have you understood that much yet? Amen. Has the Lord opened your eyes up you to believe Jesus came and died on the cross and paid for your sins? You know something else, though, I think is real important that a lot of people forget? A big part of getting saved is repentance. If you're not sorry for sinning, and you don't want to change, I don't believe you can get saved. That's right. But the Bible, and, and people have said, you know, we're going to come to the day when nobody, they won't repent. They don't really want to change. They'd like to have a fire escape. They, they don't mind carrying Jesus around the trunk, but they don't want to get Him out. There except when they need something. They don't want him running their life. They don't want him telling me anything about how to live. Well, I got to move on and get into this. I'm still introducing. <laughs> and uh, notice verse. Uh, go back to Luke chapter four and verse. Notice verse twenty four twenty. And he closed the book, and he sat down. At, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down. And that's my sermon right there. Well, you think I'll just go on home now? Or you think maybe I'll explain those a little bit? Well, what do you think I'm going to do? Go on home or explain them? Uh-huh. And when he had finished speaking, he closed the book. He closed the book. That This is like an accounting term. Do they close your books every year? <laughs> you go face the IRS if they don't. Is that about the way it works? It's true. How many here want to mess with the IRS? No. No time. I'd rather avoid the government as much as I can. And so this is an accounting term. All transactions are finished. You think the Lord finished everything? Amen. He closed the books. Did he die and pay enough on the cross to save everybody that wants to get saved? Yeah. So he closed the book, didn't he? On the law. And uh, like I say, that's a, all the columns uh, balanced, everything is in order. You ever have trouble balancing your checkbook? Well, I don't think the Lord has any trouble balancing his. But, uh, and he closed the book of the law. Are we under the law anymore? No. But we need a law in our heart. See, that's different, isn't it? That's a, to me, that's a higher law. You know, you can make a list of rules, but it's not just keeping the list of rules. It's best if you want to keep them. But we have grace. We can. We we have free will. We can say, Lord, Lord, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to read my Bible. I, I'm not going to witness to anybody. Most of us aren't going to say, I'm not going to pray, because when you get in trouble, you pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in going to Vincennes University. The guy says, Well, I don't believe there's a God. But when he was bowling and he wanted to win, he'd pray and ask God to help him win. Well, he's praying somebody doesn't believe exists. Well, that's what he was saying, wasn't it? This is a college student now. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's kind of funny. And so he closed the book of the law. Everyone, for you know, the, the Jews had four, the, we've had 4,000 years to keep the law. And everybody's come short except Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Somebody says, how, how can you say that? 
Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now you might compare yourself to me and say, I'm better than that guy. But if you compare yourself to Jesus, you cannot say you're better than him. That's right. Not to be honest. Matter of fact, I think if you'd say that, you'd be lying. And I think I can show you verses that even say that. Jesus measured up to the law. Amen. Somebody says, well, give us a verse. I will. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come to destroy, uh, not to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. He kept it all. Have you kept it all? Now, Paul said he could keep about all of it, except he said there's one thing that gets me. It's a thing called covetousness. Covetousness. Some of you could say I never murdered anybody. Never, you know, I don't go around stealing. But Jesus kept all the law. He was tempted in all points like we are yet without sin. He closed the book of the Pentateuch, the five, first five books of the Old Testament with the law. Moses gave us those. Of course, mainly we know about the Ten Commandments. Now, I think there's around 600 laws, 500 and some. I don't know the exact number. I'd have to go ahead and look it up, but it's a bunch. It's just like in America. They've got so many laws, you're probably breaking laws you don't even know about. Yeah. And then they won't make a few more. But he closed the book on the, uh, the Pentateuch. You know, back in the Old Testament, he was the Shekinah glory. He was the one that led the people around through the wilderness. The Holy Spirit's what leads us today. But and all the way through the Old Testament, Jesus was the manna that came down and fed them. He was the water out of the rock. He was the Passover lamb. You realize he... That they sacrificed all those lambs through the Old Testament, but the, actually Jesus died at the time of the Passover, I believe, and he was the uh, and you remember Isaac needed a lamb. Abraham was going to sacrifice him, wasn't it? Wasn't that the way the story went? And the Lord said that he would provide himself a lamb. Amen. What he did is, it's Jesus. He provided Jesus, and then. He, he fulfilled all the prophecies. Jesus fulfills all the prophecy of the Old Testament. That's right. All of them. And uh, another thing, one for the Lord, none of us would have any life. You know they're saying, well, it's my body, I can do what I want to with it. Well, would you have a body if God didn't give you a body? Nope. Would you have yeah. physical life if God didn't give you physical life? Can you have eternal life, spiritual life, if God didn't give you that? No. Nope. So did he, does he fulfill? Uh, you know, the, constant, uh, the Bill of Rights, I think it is, talks about how life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have life, you don't have anything. That's right. That's, that, that's where it starts. A lot of these little babies don't even get a chance to start. I always like to see little kids. It's neat how their little fingers work and their toes. Uh huh. There was a bunch of them up at the shuttles. That missionary had what about three or four? And, and of course, then you got Elizabeth was up there. I think Elizabeth's about the Rebecca's age, and uh, she's their youngest one. And they go all the way up what to seventeen, ten of them. They have ten children. And uh, but he closed the book on redemption too. You know when Jesus hanging on the cross, did he say it is finished? Mm -hmm. I believe he said something like that, didn't he? And you know, really he has control. Some people think the devil has control over your life. But if you go back to the book of Job, God told Satan he could tag Job, but he limited him every time. Uh, 
And he took away all of his possessions and his children. Mm -hmm. But he, the Lord said, you can't touch him. And the devils came back and said, uh, well, anybody could stand up to losing everything. Let me touch his body. And the Lord said, okay. And Job's sitting there on an ash heap, scraping the sores on his body from head to toe. But he tells Satan, he says, but you can't kill him. So who had control over life? Really, who has control over life right now? Is it the devil? Our God. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 29. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 29. And I think these are verses that maybe you could mark in your Bible. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In hell. Mm -hmm. Who really has the power? Mm -hmm. Does the devil have it? No. Jesus does. But the devil tries to make you think he has it. Mm -hmm. Devil's pretty tricky. He's subtle. And he fools a lot of people. But actually, uh, when Jesus is hanging on the cross, he said, it is finished. That was some of the words that he said from the cross. Well, what, what was finished? It wasn't he was finished. Yeah, he, yes, his body died. But he still, he, he decided when he would die. He said, well, who killed Jesus? Well, let's read a few verses and we'll find out. Was it the Jews or was it the Gentiles? Or maybe it was all of us because of our sin. Yeah. But I, I'm going to tell you what really killed Jesus. Love. love. Mm -hmm. It was love. He chose to die. He loved you enough to die for you. Amen. Now, how much more? It says a husband ought to love his wife enough to die for her. And it, that's a comparison to the bride of Christ, the church, and Jesus, our bridegroom. And Jesus was willing. He set us an example. In John chapter 19, verse 30 says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, He said it is finished, and He bowed His head and gave up the ghost. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, it is finished. What was finished? Did He close the book on salvation? Did He make a way for you to get saved and go to heaven or not? And why would you believe Him? Is there any reason for believing Him? Well, let's go to John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Then the next verse. No man hath taken it from me, but I lay it down of my lay it down, and I have power to lay it, take it again. Uh, this commandment he uh, have I received of the Lord of the Father. Did he lay it down? Did he take it again? Yes, sir. Is he still in the grave? No. If you go over there and try to find his grave, is he in there? No, he's not there, is he? Some are still looking. Yeah, there's some still... Well, it's kind of like the missing link everybody's looking for. Yeah. You know that part animal, part human link? Yeah. Oh, Have no. they ever found it? They'll fire eventually. Well then, you know, why don't you believe in evolution? Don't you believe you evolved from some ooze? Doesn't that even go back to this abortion thing? That's just some tissue in a, a woman. No, it's a baby. It's a human, not completely, but it gets developed pretty quick. It's a human from the time of conception, the Bible teaches. That's right. And uh, 
I had some other verses I wanted to give you here. Well, I guess I could give you my outline. I haven't even given you my outline, have I? Uh, so first, first point, the first point is, when he had finished speaking, he closed the book. He closed the book. He closed the book on prophecy. He closed the book on getting you saved. Didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Is it settled? Are you as good as in heaven right now? Didn't Jesus come out of the grave? Then can you come out of the grave one day? Yes. See? So we look at these things. Second point, He gave the book to the minister. He gave the book to the minister, if you read our text. You know, what a responsibility. It's up to you to tell people about Jesus now. Then He give you the book. Have you ever told anybody about Jesus? Anybody t did anybody tell you about him? If somebody didn't tell you about him, you're probably not saved. Right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody probably had something to do with that. Of course, Jesus had the ultimate part of it, didn't he? He made the way for you to get saved. He gave us the gospel, the good news of salvation. That you don't have to die and go to hell. Some people say, I don't believe there's a hell. Well, Jesus did. He preached about it quite a bit. But he gave, he gave the book to the minister. What a responsibility. What a privilege. When a preacher goes into the pulpit, he represents the king. Somebody says, well, what about us? Well, you're ambassadors. Amen. I'm an ambassador. He, he, he holds the preacher from the... Uh, I need to pick up my Bible and preach out here, right? What else do I have to preach? Current events? Huh? Well, in a lot of churches, that's the kind of stuff you're going to hear. It's Girl Scout Sunday. It's Boy Scout Sunday. I've been in churches like that. They, they don't read many scriptures. You know, really, we want to be telling people about Jesus and how He's going to come back one of these days. But when he comes back, if they're not ready, he'll judge them. We ought to have great expectations because the, the book is the answer to all the problems of the world. Well, I don't know. I thought the Democrats had it, or the Republicans had it, or the president. Matter of fact, if you had a one world government, who would you want to run it? Who could you trust? Jesus. No human. Because when humans get power, they want more power. And now what happens? I think we better have Jesus run the world. Amen. Don't you think it would be better if God was running things? I, I don't think His pride would get the best of Him. That's right. Huh? Never I don't think so. And He holds the key to heaven and we should never be ashamed of the Gospel. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. But if you go out here trying to tell people about Jesus, some people are going to, they don't like it. They might say something mean to you. Mm -hmm. They might even punch you. Sorry. Matter of fact, when I was in Bible college, there was this young fellow, Tom Solosi, he's from Cleveland, Ohio, and he was raised in the Catholic Church. And uh, uh, the Catholic Church back then didn't want any of their people go and visit in Protestant churches. And he heard there was this revival and he talked his mother into going to this revival at Cleveland Baptist Temple. And they got saved. Well, he had a lot of these friends that were Catholics that he grew up with. And he told one of them, he says, you know, Mary had other children besides Jesus. And the guy said, no, she was ever virgin. Now what the Catholic Church says? Mm -hmm. But then he showed him in the Bible a list of some names. Yeah. After Jesus was born. She was virgin until after Jesus was born. But the guy punched him. 
because it made him so mad that it was against what he'd been taught for all those years. You know, I, I don't know what's the word you use. Temperance, tolerance. Well, you know, I'm tolerant as long as you go along with me. Isn't that what the, a lot of people are? In the past, tolerance was, I might not agree with you, but I'm not going to hurt you over it. But I have a right to my opinion, and you have a right to your opinion. Exactly. Now we're to the point, no, there's only one opinion. It's mine. And yours doesn't matter. No, it's not really about me. It's about God. Isn't it? It's not about you either. <clears throat> Who's really going to have the final control when we get down to the end of the things? Be God will. Romans 1.16 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Most of you are probably Greeks, Gentiles. Then my third point, he sat down. Amen. Jesus sat down. And there's verses that said he sat down at the right hand of the Father up in heaven. And he's interceding for you. And if the devil comes up and accuses you, you, he stands up and defends you. Do you stand up and defend him when people attack Jesus? Should you? Yes. Well, I can... I don't care, you know, whether you meet all for idols or not. I, you can even wear a colored shirt instead of a white shirt. <laughs> Used to be people wore bell-bottom pants. Mm -hmm. But now, if you start attacking and saying Jesus wasn't God, that's going to upset me. I'm going to have a discussion, though. I have to show you the Bible says He was God. And hope of eternal life, which God did cannot lie, promised before the world began. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Isaac, uh, Titus 2.13. But then he set down a, a sign of completion. Usually when you set down, you're done. Amen. If not, you ought to stay up and get it done. Isn't that right? And, uh, you know, another thing I've noticed, once you sit down, it's hard to get up. Anybody ever had any trouble with that? As you get older, it gets worse. But even when you're young. When I was working at the Coke plant, I, a lot of times I didn't sit down because if I sit down, I, didn't, I get to enjoying it. Don't want to get up and do anything. But if I just keep going, it's better, isn't it? It's easier to do it that way. Uh, it's a sign of completion. He's done all He can do for us. Didn't Jesus do everything? Didn't He say on the cross it's finished? Didn't He fulfill all the prophecies? Amen. Didn't He keep all the law? Yes, sir. What else does He need to do? Well, He doesn't have to. He's the interceding mediator. He, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And so when the devil comes and attacks me, well, then when the devil attacks Jesus, maybe I should tell people I'm on Jesus' side. Amen. I'll tell them I'm on Jesus' side. You know, really the battle begins for us. You know, in the Roman uh, times, they'd sit up there. Uh, when the emperor came in and sat down, that's when the game started. While our emperors come in and sit down, now it's your turn. Now your turn. All right, you're in a battle. The gladiators would come out. They'd turn the lions loose on the Christians. And now what they did or not? Mm -hmm. Who's the roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour? Yeah. That's Satan. And so you see, he said. Well, once Jesus sat down on the right hand of the Father, He's up in heaven interceding for us, but we're down here fighting a battle. And it is a battle. Brother Shiloh had a hat on and says, God's, I'm in the Lord's army. 
I've got one of those too. Now I don't think that's like the army Jim was in, American army. But I think it's just as much a battle. Ain't mine, not more so. I think it'd be just as much of a battle. I think there's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat involved in it. You know, you got to look them in the eye. That's right. That guy gets scary sometimes. But Jesus came in on Palm Sunday riding in on that little donkey, offered them salvation. They rejected it. But we call that the triumphal entry. Well, it was for Christians or people that believe. But the real, for the lost people, the trial, he'll come back on a white horse one of these days and he'll come in judgment. He'll come and judge. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. But if you're saved, you'll be coming back with him. That's right. You won't be down here to be judged. You'll be in heaven coming back with him to set up his kingdom on this earth. And then Romans chapter 14, verse 7 says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Amen. Every knee. I think we could take the song that says, Turn, thy, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You know, Christ has redeemed us. I've got other verses I could put in here. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And then if, I think it's Ephesians where you go over there. It says, put on, Stand strong, put on the whole armor of Christ. And we're in a fight. And somebody says, Well, I don't know. I don't see an army coming against us. No. It's uh, invisible. They're demons. Somebody says, Well, I don't believe in demons. I do. Well, the, the, right now they're talking a lot about this UFOs out there. I think there's UFOs out there. Yeah. I think there are good angels out there and bad angels. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things. Well, I thought Manny would probably be up on this. Now they got that telescope. See that on the where they've been showing that black hole? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, closer than it's ever been shown before. Mm -hmm. And it just sucks, er it. sucks everything in. Well, I was talking to Carl. I said, I wonder when, wonder when that all started. Yeah. Did it start in Genesis 1-1? You created the heaven. How far out? Pretty far. Well, how big is God? How little is God? <laughs> He's big enough to know it all and run it all, but He's small enough to fit in your heart. Have you got him in your heart? If you don't, you need him. You need him. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. You can pray and ask him today to save you. The Bible says, Whosoever is called the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Some people say, I don't like that word saved. Well, then you better get rid of your Bible because it's all through it. Amen. It's so all through your Bible, isn't it? What must I, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Acts 16:31? Uh, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Well, that means if Casey gets saved, then all his family is going to be saved. No, but if Casey starts living right, he might have an influence on the rest of his family. I just picked on Casey. I could pick. Manny's brother, I think, had an influence on that outfit. Didn't he? Oh, isn't that odd? Huh? I had a guy I witnessed to at Kokanee, bowed his head and prayed, and 
And I used that verse, and he comes back in the next day. His name was Napier. And he, he says, now his wife had been in the Jehovah's Witness church for years. And he says, does that mean my wife's saved too? I said, no, but she can get saved like you did. That's right. And that's the phrase to believe. But you know, you got to, sometimes you quote a verse and you might have to go back and help explain it. Let's all stand.